you guys know, we are resin enthusiasts. And a bunch of y'all tagged us in this very interesting looking resin curing machine that claims to cure resin faster. So of course, we got one. But then as I looked at it, I started to have a very sneaking suspicion that it might be very similar to a cheaper thing, a food dehydrator, which is a lot cheaper. I mean, you can get these for even cheaper, like 30 bucks. Ah, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that I could point to. The shelves working in similar ways, the shape, everything. But Caitlin, look at this. The nail in the coffin. What? Look at that. It's just a hole? That's a hole. That's for draining. That's for collecting fluids. If this was a resin machine, and not a dehydrator repackaged with a different name on it called resin something. Why what's would there, the hole for? Resin doesn't hole drain? For? Look at this. This is just a repackaged, overpriced dehydrator. That oh is God. my theory. If this was fully made for resin, why do they have these really cheap, flexible trays? Look you know what's flexible trays? Because your resin needs to stay level. What if yeah. the resin drips down on the fan or the heating element? which it totally can do. Resin often overflows and drips. Why isn't this silicone or some non-stick surface? Why isn't there some protection over this? For $120, it should be designed for resin, not a repackaged dehydrator. I love ranty Evan. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure we can say that this hole is like, specifically a, a no, sign that it's- No, no, you're right, you're right. There's not this, one this, here. This could be the resin drain. You know? <laughs> that would be so terrible. Resin just like drips through onto drips your table. Drips through onto your table. But maybe it is like part of like airflow or something. I maybe. don't know. Maybe. Yeah, you know, I, I'm ranting, I'm ranting, but like my, my engineering senses are just triggering me, telling me that this is a repackaged dehydrator. I have another thing I want to show you. So that's the noise of this turning on. Okay. Are you. I mean, it. <laughs> It's the same noise. I know I'm getting conspiracy theorists, but like, <laughs> I don't know. It is the same noise. The exact same like tone and length of tone. But you know one thing that I am concerned about that what? would apply to both of these mm -hmm. is that one issue you have with resin is thermal runaway. Yeah. These these are apparently working by heating up the resin to make it cure faster, mm -hmm. but like that can be a really bad thing. Yeah, if you heat things up, you might trap bubbles or you might turn it into runaway reaction, leading to bad fumes, smoke, bubbling, ruined resin. And uh, that's what we're gonna show you right now. <laughs> this is like resin time and science adjacent at the same time. I resin think. adjacent. Science time. Yeah, you look cool. I you also... look like a turtle. I was gonna say, I also look cool. <laughs> <laughs> so a background into resin and what makes it cure faster and slower is, Temperature. If you have a like pour of resin you want to cure slower, you cool it down. If you want to increase the curing rate, you heat it up, which is what these are designed for. They have fans, they have a heating element. It's like a little hot box to make your resin cure faster. But sometimes you don't want your resin to cure faster because you can have thermal runaway. Now we want to demonstrate exactly what that looks like, but I'm not sure if we could really film it in the dehydrator. So the other way to get your resin hotter is by pouring it way too thick. Resins are designed for certain thicknesses. You should read the safety sheets on the resin. Generally follow the instructions. We're doing things wrong, actually, for this special occasion. <laughs> this is my doing things wrong outfit. I like it, it's fitting. <laughs> when resin is poured at the appropriate thickness, it's only generating so much heat and it's an amount that that resin can handle. When you pour it super thick, it's generating so much more heat and that causes the resin to cure faster than it's supposed to, which generates even more heat, which causes it to cure even faster and it's just a cycle of more heat, more curing, more heat, more curing until it like bubbles and smokes in a glorious failure. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna show you. We got a thermal camera, <laughs> we got a camera filming that thermal camera because the thermal camera does not record. <laughs> we have another camera filming the resin. Yeah, so let's heat it up. So let, let, let's do a little time lapse. Okay, so it's 4.45 and we're already at 105 degrees. We just sat it down like a minute ago. 22, 23. Okay, it's It's like, I feel like it's increasing. Yeah, like, like we said, it's, it's running away. It's increasing at an increasing rate. We know that it can at least get hot enough to cook an egg. Yes. Don't ask us how we know. If you know, you know. It's interesting that it's hottest at the edges. Look at that. 
Isn't that weird? 176. I imagine it feels pretty warm to the touch, huh? Oh, it's still it's liquidy. Still, still liquidy right here. I was curious, oh, like- 210, 211, 212, 214. Look at it go, look at it go, look at it go. It's, it's happening, running. it's happening, it's running, it's running, it's running. It's, running. it's starting to smoke? Yeah. still liquidy? It's uncomfortable. It'd be very uncomfortable to hold right now. I'm capturing the smoke. Oh, whoa, it's starting, it's starting to not, oh, look at that. It's not liquidy anymore. By the time oh, it's smoking. bad, it's happening. Oh, What's the temp? Smoking. What's the temp? It's at uh, 315. Okay, look at that. The top is now cured. What, what time is it? Four. It was 445 when we started. It's 449, 449 now. 449, four minutes in. Oh and my see, gosh, this, that's hard. Oh my gosh. This is why when you see us in videos panicking about it curing too fast, this is why. This is what we're trying to avoid. Yeah. I think the smoking yeah, slowed peaked. down, so it I think peaked. it might be. Fully. Oh yeah, it's going down now, 314. Yeah. But look at that, that is 100% yep. solid. There it is, thermal runaway. Like like six minutes and it's, it's fully cured. And now yeah. that we've demonstrated to you our, our concerns, I feel prepared to move on to actually testing these two machines. Yeah, we have a few tests lined up. Man, there's so many tasty snacks we can make in this dehydrator. Mm -hmm. Dehydrated pickles, dehydrated butter, dehydrated flesh of some sort. You're scary when you're hungry. Let's take a break. But today's sponsor, HelloFresh, America's number one meal delivery kit. So we're actually real HelloFresh customers in addition to being sponsored by them. First and foremost, that's because the food is really good. And the 55 plus recipe options each week always let us try new things. But we do have a confession. When we first started ordering HelloFresh, we got like two or three meals a week. And now it's like six or seven. HelloFresh just saves us so much time compared to meal planning and going grocery shopping once or twice a week since their foolproof step-by-step -step recipes take about half an hour to make. Plus, if you have specific health goals, they offer veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals. And they're super flexible. You can change your meal amount, delivery date, or even delivery address if you're on a summer vacation. Plus, you can feel good that almost all their packaging is recyclable, and they cut down on food waste nearly 25% compared to grocery shopping. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code EVANANDCAITLIN16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Okay, Caitlin is better at remembering things and being organized, so she's gonna tell you all of the tests that we're gonna do. Okay. Go, Caitlin, go. Are you getting a chair? Yeah. You're not going to be talking for that long, <laughs> hopefully. So we want to test three different things, basically. One, low powder. This guy's using a desert bean that sells a lot of resin much faster, and that helps how much faster we can make it here faster than the resin, because typically bubbles escape so much. Then during faster prevent settling from happening. We've had that happen a lot with us. In one, how much faster does using one of these machines make the resin cure compared to something curing at room temp? Two, does the faster curing cause bubbles to be trapped within the resin? Three, does curing faster prevent settling from happening? We have everything going, it's cooking. We have some time lapses to see yep. if we can tell anything from that. So we'll check back in in what, two hours? Two hours, yep. Two hours to see how the ones in here compare to the ones out here. All right guys, it's only been seven minutes yet I'm already having observations. The cheaper dehydrator, uh, it's already almost at to the temperature that we set it to, 158 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see right here, the- um, Expensive. It's only at 127 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. So I'm not sure if it heating up slowly is a bug or a feature. Maybe like you don't want to heat up resin too fast, but like also yeah. the cheap one has fully heated all the way through. It's one even temperature. The one specifically for resin is much warmer on the bottom than it is on top. It's been 47 minutes and I, I still have concerns. The cheap one is at 150, which is around where we set it at. The more expensive one, that's specifically for resin, is only up to 134 degrees Fahrenheit. So on this channel, we like to 
fess up when we make mistakes. <laughs> and we don't enjoy it, <laughs> but that's just part of what we do. And we made a few. We didn't read the directions. It's a, it's, it's a mistake a lot of people make, okay? <laughs> but in the instructions, it does say to let the resin stand for 15 to 30 minutes until the bubbles disappear before turning this on, which makes sense. Because like logically with our resin brains, we knew that, that was bubbles a possibility. Bubbles would get trapped, yep, yeah. exactly. We set our <clears throat> control pieces very close to the resin machines because we wanted them to be in frame for our temperature camera. But these are hot and they radiate a lot of heat, more than we thought. So this, these, these resin samples that we thought were gonna be the control were instead almost getting blasted by a heat gun for the whole hour they cured. Exactly. Yeah, we, we, we realized this halfway through the test. We wanted to see if these would accelerate the cure of the resin so that you could demold them sooner. Well, watch this. Our control pieces are fully cured an hour into the experiment. Look what I can well, do. It was supposed to be a two hour experiment. Remember earlier when we said um, the bigger the volume of resin, the hotter it gets, the faster, faster it cures, cures, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Because these cubes are pretty thick and pretty beefy, they generated enough heat with a little bit of assistance from the radiant heat here to cure in an hour. Yeah. These are 100% ready to demold now. <sighs> We're gonna have to do this whole thing over again and set it up with all of these lessons learned. So it's been two hours, and I think the first thing we should inspect are the pieces that were sitting outside. The controls. It's stretchy, it's goopy, it is not cured. If you try to demold it, you probably can demold it at this point. It's gonna be bendy though. But look at that. Oof. That's not what Ooh. you want. Oh, it's That's forbidden kind of gummy. Oh, oh. Look at this. Whoop. Whoop, but look at that, you can like bend it, recombine it. You can make look a ring. That. Oh can you make gosh. me a ring? I, 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 I just did it, here you go. Let's let it dry first. The point is it's not cured at it's all. It's not cured like, at all. Not yeah. even close. We'll leave these overnight to see what they look like when they cure normally. But let's see if these accelerated cure ones are mm -hmm. fully cured. The moment of truth. That, is, that sounds cured. Sounds cured. Okay. That's, that's cured. This machine, it did do what it said it was gonna do. Yeah. You know, you compare these two. <laughs> you know, I do have my doubts about this machine in some ways, but does it do what it says that it would do? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I really think it does. Now but now, happen. is this better or more functional than a standard sock dehydrator? Let's see. Ooh, How's it feel? Whoa. Bendy or No, it's it's perfectly hard. Yep. Okay. So in terms of doneness, this is it good. seems like the cheap dehydrator that's half the price worked just as well. Yep. And you know, you can run this for even more hours. This is two hours max. You can run this for 72 hours. Why would you need to do that? I, I don't know. So tomorrow we'll demold our room temperature cured ones and look for bubbles and settling. So we double checked and we can actually demold slow cure resin after five hours. The resin that sat out, that we took out too early at the two and a half hour mark, that was super deformable. It seems now, really hard now. It's really hard. So I think we can demold these. Yeah, this is nice and sharp. It's cutting my fingers, perfect. There we go. Oh, okay. I'm already seeing results. Should we just go ahead and say? Okay. Wow. It's more clear. There are so many more bubbles on the dehydrator and resin curing machine I think ones. that if you need super clear resin, you should just let it cure for its full intended time. But honestly, for the glow in the dark, 
I see no differences. I see no differences. But, Absolutely well, no differences. in terms of bubbles, but we in have another bubbles, test yeah. for this, which is does it settle <laughs> more or less? No, not much difference. It settles just as much. Just as you much. You can see it through the light. If you cure it faster, you do trap more bubbles. That matters more with translucent resin. If you cure faster, it doesn't necessarily suspend your mix-ins better. Yeah. But I'll have to say this. If you want to cure resin faster, putting it inside of a hot box mm -hmm. works. It, it totally work. works. It totally works. You know? And if you want a nice, convenient box, just get a dehydrator. I think just get a dehydrator. The, the dehydrators, there's all sorts of shapes, sizes, variety. There's a bajillion choices. Many that are even cheaper than the $60 one we got. Yeah, you can get them for 30 bucks. Hope you guys have enjoyed this process. Hope it's been useful and or entertaining. And if it was neither, uh, I refund you nothing. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video, hopefully. Bye. Wait. You have to propose to me. Okay. Caitlin, my love. Thank you. You bring light into my life. And I want our love to be forever like this resin is forever. Will you forever wear this resin ring I made? Yes. <laughs> A thousand times yes! <laughs> now I know some of you guys might be wondering about the beef, about the drama we have going on with Jackie at Nerdy Crafter yeah. over this machine. Yeah, we both got tagged to review this at the same time, and she beat us by two months. So, you know what? She won the beef. She we're, won the beef. We're not salty about it. We're, we're not salty. salty. <laughs> she might be salty, but we're not salty. <laughs> if you want to check out Jackie's channel, Nerdy Crafter, she has awesome craft and kit videos. We'll have her link in the description. Boop. I look cool. <laughs> also, I realized I don't have junk in the trunk. I got junk in the back. So, okay, we'll cut that, sorry. I wanted to say it earlier, but then we stopped recording and I thought it'd be funny and apparently I'm, apparently I'm wrong. I need to breathe, I need to breathe, it's not making me laugh. <laughs>